bless you, brothers and sisters, one more time from wherever you're connecting. We want to take our teaching of today titled The True Riches. Wow, The True Riches, The True Riches. We are taking our text from the book of Luke chapter 16, verses 11 and 12 verses 11 and 12, specifically verse 11. And we add verse 12. So let's read our texts together. So if you have not been trustworthy in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you with true riches? That's verse 11. Then verse 12. And if you have not been trustworthy with someone else's property, who will give you property of your own? Praise the name of the Lord. Um, that is NIV, New International Version. Let me read the New King James Version. So... You can understand when we keep using the words interchangeably. He said, therefore, if you have not been faithful, so you've seen trustworthy means the same thing as faithful. Note that. If you have not been faithful in the unrighteous mammon, so unrighteous mammon is what the uh, New International Version translates worldly wealth. So worldly wealth the wealth of this world. On, so New King James Version calls it unrighteous mammon. And we need to get this understanding because at times some people thought this scripture was referring to wealth as something that is unrighteous. No. Um, but the Bible says money answered all things. <laughs> so, uh, but we know, of course, that what the Bible means there, it, it was in context, it's talking about money as a leverage. Money helps you to achieve a lot. That's what it meant there when it says money answered all things. It didn't mean that with money you can do all things. You know, of course, you can immediately reflect on that and see situations where people are sick, and they have all the money, but the doctors cannot help them. And so in such moments, they need the Holy Ghost, the gifts of healing in the name of Jesus. They need the stripes of Jesus to heal them. Hallelujah. And that comes without money. Oh, glory be to God. So you see the context of the scripture. And you need to understand the scripture. Praise the name of the Lord. Verse 12. And if you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you what is your own? If you have not been faithful in what is another man's, who will give you your own? So this is our text. So verse 11 there brings out the text, true riches. So we're going to focus on this series the true riches. And as a Christian, you have to understand the true riches. Praise the name of the Lord. So let's connect the context of this. I'm going to share uh, my screen and share with us that a book God Almighty helped us to put together. I've told you that that book, uh, I didn't think about it to write. Uh, it was given to me. So you can see a book that is uh, practically how many pages, facilitator, 11 or 12 pages. We can preach this book and we will preach the whole Bible. <laughs> Amen. So, we have to again understand, I gave us a simple process that you can always use to understand things. Number one, remember you should understand the foundation. Yeah, you understand the foundation. When you understand the foundation, then you go from the foundation to 
the meaning and then how you practicalize it. You can uh, use that. Uh, there are three words I often use in uh, framing things and coaching people out of frame things. So uh, tell yourself the what, the why, and the how. The what, the why, and the how. Okay. So in page nine of that book, Who is a Christian? And please get your electronic copy. This is the electronic copy is available. You can always reach us and the facilitator will send you a copy. Even if you need a hard copy, we have plenty. We can mail it to you free of charge. Um, and it's a very good book for you to use for your evangelism, which was one of the uh, actions that uh, of, uh, of the assignment in our last teaching. Praise the name of the Lord. Uh, one of the assignments is for us to speak to a soul about Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, the lover of his soul, the lover of mankind, a week, at least a soul a week. And I hope every one of us connected here, you have done that assignment last week. If you did not, you have to do that this week. Make it your lifestyle. Every week, speak to a soul about his or her savior, about the love of God that has been sent to him or her to redeem him and redeem her. So that's the foundation that we must have. So in this uh, book on page nine, remember how to become a Christian. We talk about five steps. The last step says, uh, uh, which is uh, point five, you must now live by faith and love, having given your life to Jesus Christ and received and asked God to give you the Holy Spirit and you have received the Holy Spirit by faith, that you are to live by faith and love. And we spent the last uh, month and the first two weeks of this month teaching on faith and love. Praise the name of the Lord, the love of God. So now we're talking about manifesting that spirit of God in a very practical way in your life. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, the Holy Spirit manifests the life of God in you just like he did in Jesus Christ. The problem is that many of us are hiding this gift, this power of God that we have received. We think that the power of God only is when we go to our churches. No, the power of God is given to you to live, is given to me to live. By that foundation of faith and love, you are to now express this in the aspects of life that brings the true riches as God has ordained it to be. And that's what we will be teaching. There are many things in life that we need to understand. And Jesus Christ taught us quite a lot that we haven't even explored a, 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 a tip of it. So I'll read this and just give us the context and then we will move on into the teaching. So the Holy Spirit that has been given to you, given to me, will manifest gifts as power of God, fruit, righteousness of God, which we've covered, ministry, acceptable services to God, and fellowship, communion with God in you. Now, the expression of this God in you, God in me, is the sum total, the totality of your life, of your living. And so when we're talking about true riches, we are then talking about all that God Almighty has kept for you in life as you live by this grace of God by these provisions of God. And money is one of them. Don't let anybody deceive you. 
but you'd have to know how to go about it in the right way. Praise the name of the Lord. So as the teaching on the pathway of eternal life continues, we have to understand our own role. Have we received this spirit grace? How do we live by faith and love practically to enjoy the true riches that the Almighty God has given to us? I pray that the Almighty God will open your understanding. The Almighty God will open my understanding to know more and live more and enlarge more. Glory be to God. And be that leader and be that uh, uh, man, that woman, that God's uh, child, son, daughter, that will make the impact that God Almighty has created you, created me to make in the name of Jesus. I will stop sharing now. I will go back to our text and I will set um, the structure of how we're going to go in this study. We want this study to be very practical. So we will keep it simple, uh, short, so we can have lots of discussions. So we have seen from the texts, Jesus was the one teaching here. And he says, if you have not been faithful in handling worldly wealth, who will trust you? Who will give to you the true riches? Ah, so this tells us something here, that there is a process of training that God himself uses the worldly wealth and worldly processes to train up those whom he commits true riches into their hand. That total life, that eternal life, to handle the blessing. As I say that, I remember in some traditional setting, even in some traditional setting, to portray this point, that they will say, they will look at people in their families and they will say, ah, you see this one? This one, if they give him the family riches, the family her heritage, whatever it is, he will not protect it for the family. This one will squander the family heritage. Don't give it to him. And they will give to the ones that have demonstrated that faithfulness, that behavior, that character. Praise the name of the Lord. So this is what we will be looking at. How you handle these true riches. There is no time that is too late to start. Even now is the time to start. And you can see the foundation is the Holy Spirit. And you can only have the Holy Spirit when you have come to Jesus Christ. So let's get that foundation right. So we're still teaching that model B-R-R-B-L. Believe God and his son Jesus Christ. Repent of your sins and accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Forsake your sins and then ask God to give you the Holy Spirit and receive him, the Holy Spirit, by faith. That is the second arrow. And then believe that you have received the Holy Spirit and have become a son or daughter of God. That is the second B. And then live by faith and love. Manifesting this Spirit's grace. That's what we are here to do. You see, there are different manifestations of the Spirit grace and different uh, um, experiences, and people have put them down, which we have to develop ourselves and grow in that grace. 
praise the name of the Lord. So through riches, there is a process. And there are heroes in the Bible that we will be looking at. One of such heroes is Joseph. Hallelujah. Joseph. But let's start taking some of the things the Bible says. Let's go to Matthew chapter 16, verse 19. Often people quote this scripture, they quote it in part and don't take where the context uh, applies. It says, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Is that in your Bible? That's what we're talking about here. That having become a son, having become a daughter, there are processes, there are principles, and that's what is called the key, the keys of the kingdom. So I read it again. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And what do you do with the keys of the kingdom of heaven? Read it with me, the second part. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you lose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I know many people enjoy quoting this scripture. But they only quote the second part. I will, whatever I bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever I lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. No, 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 that's incomplete. It is with the keys of the kingdom of heaven that you bind on earth and it is bound in heaven. You lose on earth and it is loosed in heaven. It is with the keys of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So what does key here mean or keys? It means the principles, the principles of the kingdom of heaven. So we are here to learn the principles of the kingdom of heaven, how to have the true wealth, the true riches, as Jesus said there. That there is a process of coming to the true riches. So it is not just money. Yes, but money is part of it. Praise the name of the Lord. The true riches. It comes by the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And where do we find the principles of the kingdom of heaven? It is found in the scripture, the Bible, the word of God. Praise the name of the Lord. So we come to the word of God to know the principles. So it is like Jesus said there. He said, if you are not faithful in the earthly wealth, in the worldly riches, who will give to you, trust to you, the true riches? Great, 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 amazing, amazing word, deep word. We're going to explore that. So here, he taught using uh, the example of what Peter said. You know, Jesus in this um, uh, discourse here, in this event, what happened here was asking the disciples, he said, who do you say I? The son of man, I am. Haven't asked them who the people said he was. He then asked them, who do you say I am? And Peter answered and said, you are the Christ. You see that in verse 16. Matthew 16, verse 16. The son of the living God. It was then Jesus made this statement. And said, blessed are you, Simon bar Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And we, how did the Father in heaven reveal to Peter? By the Holy Spirit. Brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit whom we have received, who have been given to us, uh, who has been given to us, is not uh, something, is not uh, the Spirit for us to play with. 
It is so large, so great. It is life we have received. It is eternal life that we have to live. So this is about us living and becoming as large as God has ordained us to be. Glory be to God. So he said, it is revealed by my Father who is in heaven. It was then he then added, he said, and I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. On this revelation given by the Holy Spirit of God, of my Father, my Father's, my Father revealing that I, Jesus, I am the Son of God, the Christ. And he then went further to say, and I will give you, and I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, the principles of the kingdom of heaven. And when you use these principles, whatever you bind on earth, will be bound in heaven. Heaven honors whatever you do according to this principle. Whatever you lose on earth is loosed in heaven. Do you now understand? Praise the name of the Lord. So now let's see the word that we must use to access the true riches. Haven't understood the foundation. Praise the name of the Lord. Today, is introduction of this topic. Third John 2, third John 2, you know the scripture. It says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Some translation says, I pray above all things that you may prosper and be in health, even as your soul prospers. So it is indeed God's real, real, true desire and provision for his children to prosper and prosper greatly, to have wealth, to be wealthy, to have the true riches, true riches that God himself commits to us according to the principle. The beautiful thing is that once God's principle has been set, whoever practices it receives the result. Hello, I'm sure you're shocked there. Whoever practices the principle receives the result. That's the kindness of our God. I often tell us and challenge also note this word, that grace of God is general and available to all. It is the application of that grace that makes the differentiation. The grace of God is available to all mankind. It is the application of that grace that makes the differentiation. And the grace of God does not select brothers and sisters. Hello. Glory be to God. Thank you, Lord. So in Psalm 35, verse 27, it says, let them shout for joy and be glad who favor my righteous cause. And let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified who has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God has pleasure in the prosperity of his children. Praise the name of the Lord. So, the scripture that we read as our text emphasized our faithfulness, our character, our behaviors. So when we're talking about our behaviors, as I've just said, that grace is available, grace of God is sufficient, it is the application. So it is the way uh, we behave towards this grace, use all that is what I will sum up in one word, leadership. 
I will sum up our behaviors, our achievements, all that in one word, leadership. So your leadership, my leadership, our leadership will really determine how far we go in this grace. And again, you see leadership is not restricted to Christians. And that's why we Christians must learn leadership and know that indeed God is the number one leader. Praise the name of the Lord. And Jesus Christ demonstrated leadership that enabled him to achieve the purpose for which God sent him. And that's exactly what we are about to do. So note that word, uh, leadership. There are different definitions of leadership, many definitions. But I want to put leadership very simply. Uh, I think one of my leadership uh, uh, um, mentor, I read his books. I haven't attended, uh, been able to attend one of uh, his programs, but I read his books a lot, is uh, John C. Maxwell. John C. Maxwell. And in his book, The Five Levels of Leadership, he simply says leadership means influence. Yes, that's what it is. Leadership is influence. I won't go deep into leadership. I'll come back to that. But just understand that leadership, your leadership level, your leadership capacity, which you can develop, we can all develop, is what really drives how you apply and enjoy the grace that has been made available to you. The Holy Spirit really wants to develop you, develop me to the extent that we make the impact that God has called us to make. So for me, I put leadership this way. Uh, Before that, let me just give another, uh, what I, I, I looked at the dictionary as I always do, and I picked something that was interesting to me. It says leadership is the power or ability to lead other people, the power or ability to lead other people. That's often what is looked at, at uh, business, management, all that, uh, uh, organization, they're looking at looking leading people by definition. But of course, um, we know that leadership is what any individual has to exhibit to really achieve the fullness of God's uh, 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 gifts, skills, and talent, all that God has given to you, what God has kept for you in life, you will achieve it by your personal leadership. And it is that your personal leadership that takes you to that height. So leadership, yes, it can be a position, as often people say, oh, yeah, he occupies a position of leadership. But it's not everyone in a position of leadership that is a leader. And that's why some people are given position and they fail woefully. Just like the uh, traditional setting that I mentioned earlier, that in some traditional setting, they will look at people and say, this one, don't give him the heritage of the family because he will squander it. He will not take care of it. He will not make it to grow, to prosper, to benefit other people. So... That dictionary definition of uh, leadership as a position, uh, the world has long passed that, or even look, li- limiting it to uh, uh, leading a group of people, the world has long gone past that. Leadership, I agree with uh, what um, uh, my favorite leadership guru, uh, John C. Maxwell says, leadership is influence. It's the overall impact that you make in life. So this is how I I put it with that understanding that leadership is the sum total of one's impact and achievements in life. (laughs) Yes, your overall. So one can have negative impact and can have positive impact. 
But when we are talking about leadership, we're then talking about, of course, if you have a negative impact, it's going to be bad. So we're talking about one then having a positive impact in life and society. I said this is driven by the skill sets, talents, and behavior that that individual applies in serving people. These people include family, organization, society, nation, or nations. Hallelujah. We will come back to this. So one of our clearest example of one who receives the spirit grace that we, like we have now through Jesus Christ, that we want to look at is Joseph. Joseph. So let's quickly look at Joseph. As I said, today is introduction. So I've talked about uh, I've set the scene. Let's look at Joseph very quickly. We'll start with Genesis chapter 37. And we'll see, we'll just mention what we call the keys of Joseph. Hallelujah. That's what we'll be studying. And from there, we will go on. I believe God that as you master these keys, you will see things change. I'm not telling you stories or theories. They are keys that, again, the Almighty God helped me to practice. And also studying, like I've just told you about the books I, I read as well. Um, leaders who have experienced it and God has given them grace to put things down, both from the scripture. I don't know if you know about uh, John Maxwell's Leadership Bible. If you read John Maxwell's Leadership Bible as well, you learn a lot. You see the translation of the gifts of God, all that God has given us, the principles, the keys God has given us into practical living that brings us the true riches. So let's look at Joseph's life in this context, the keys of Joseph. I will tell us those keys. We want to start reading from verse 1. He said, Now Jacob dwelt in the land where his father was a stranger, in the land of Canaan. This is the history of Jacob. Joseph, being 17 years old, was feeding the flock with his brothers, and the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and the sons of Zilpah his father's wives, and Joseph brought a bad report of them to his father. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all his children because he was the son of his old age. Also, he made him a tonic of many colors. So the coat of many colors that we always talk about. Verse 4, but when his brother saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Five. Now Joseph had a dream. And what did Joseph have? A dream. And he told it to his brothers. And they hated him even more. So he said to them, please hear this dream, which I have dreamt. There, there we were binding sheaves in the field. Then behold. My sheep arose and also stood upright, and indeed your sheaves stood all around and bowed down to my sheep. Eight. And his brother said to him, Shall you indeed reign over us, or shall you indeed have dominion over us? So they hated him even more for his dreams and for his words. Then he dreamed still another dream and told it to his brothers and said, look, I have dreamed, I have dreamt another dream. And this time, the sun, the moon, and the seven stars, and the 11 stars, rather, bowed down to me. Ten. So he told it 
to his father and his brothers. And his father rebuked him and said to him, what is this dream that you have dreamt? Shall your mother and I and your brothers indeed come to bow down to the earth before you? Eleven, the last. And his brothers envied him, but his father kept the matter in mind. So this is what we'll be looking at. Now, I want to talk to us on what I call the four S's of Joseph. The four S's of Joseph. Number one S is skill. Number two S is service. Number three S is self-discipline. Number four S is sacrifice. All this embodied and driven by a clear vision. Joseph had a vision. He had a dream. His brothers understood what the vision was, but Joseph was driven by this dream. And for him to actualize the dream that God gave him, he had to go through that process with these four key principles. Skill, service, self-discipline, and sacrifice. These are the principles we will be looking at. Do you have a dream? There are many of us, even as a child, oh, you had dreams, you had visions, but today, where are those dreams? Because you have not learned how to translate your dream and vision into reality. This is what we want to look at. I want to pause here, and we will take maybe comment, questions, and we will follow through this study next Sunday. So make it a date to come and hear the four keys of Joseph, powered by a very clear vision or dream. God bless you. I'll take the questions now. Yeah. For me, I think I, I really want to just um, say thank you, first of all, because I think those four points you mentioned, they are sharp. I am expecting, I'm, ex I'm looking forward to the <laughs> way you start to break them down. I've just been watching how you're building layer upon layer up until you mentioned the four ends, and I'm like, wow, wow, wow. I'm already writing things down. I'm expecting, that's just all I want to say. I'm expectant, I'm expectant, I'm open. The so one God is going to share with us through you. Thank you. Sir. Amen. Glory be to God. I'm excited. I'm excited and myself about it. So thanks. Thanks for that. Indeed, the four S's of Joseph, powered by a clear vision and dream. And I know every one of us have dreams. We have visions. And if you didn't have, please pray now. Let the Holy Spirit give you visions and dreams. But I can tell you, everyone, at least half. But many dreams have been blown away. Oh, what a sad thing. Many visions have been blown away because you couldn't translate your visions and dreams into clear process, principles, keys of the kingdom that bring success. Yes, Sister Comfort, please go ahead. Hi, I, I think I, I joined Brother Dara to say I am excited and to thank God Almighty for this platform. And like you have said, it has made it so simple, so clear. And another thing I really want to thank God, I, I, I would like to say one of uh, my children <laughs> said, when he listened to motivational speakers, they are just stealing a little bit and pieces from the scripture to say I'm a motivational speaker. And since I come to have uh, this clear understanding of the love of God, wow. The, the if, like you have said, many people have blown away their dreams. The scripture says, 
Loving God means we observe his commandment. His commandments are not burdensome. Yes. And they said, when you, you are guided by the Holy Spirit, you cannot be misled. That's right. But because people make this thing look so abstract mm -hmm. if you, and put burden on us. Yes. And the children of God, we forget about this simple thing, the Holy Spirit. Yes. If Jesus said, ask the Father and it shall be given. Mm -hmm. I've, until now, I never knew I could have Holy Spirit. Oh, glory that be That it Jesus. was for every child of God. Hallelujah. Everyone who comes so to Jesus Christ. You can, like uh, my you brother said, you, to the Holy Spirit. you make this thing, you can see that we, we refuse to listen, to allow God to speak to us. Yes. The moment we learn to depend on God. Yeah. Before, I also used to wonder when people said the spirit God didn't say. tell me. Uh -huh. Now, I, it is very simple. Let's be yes. God told me it is easy. Yes. That's it, it is simple. It is simple. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Yes. Well, Thank well, you. Well, let me connect there because that's exactly what I would call the crux of the matter. It is a journey. Now, learning to walk and understand what the Holy Spirit is saying. Sometimes the Spirit speaks to us and we don't even know. <laughs> How many times have you just before somebody showed up in your house, maybe your mind, you just remember that person, but you didn't pay any attention. And, you, and when the person shows up and you say, oh, ah, this thing that just came to my mind. And even sometimes this message is given to us and we misunderstand it because we are not. So again, tip on that right away here. When that happens to you, please pray. Ask the Holy Spirit, please guide me, help me to understand this thing. Let me just share again on that. Somebody I've not seen, I, I, I am a colleague, I have, um, taking a retirement from the organization I used to work. And I haven't seen the person for over three years, or in fact, more than three years, uh, over four years, four or five years or so. And I was hearing about um, change of um, leadership in that he was a, one of the senior leaders in the organization. And I didn't see the person's name and uh, yeah, but. So I was in my bathroom to tell you, and I was just singing crazy. Suddenly I heard the name of this person and with a message, with a clear message, tell him or oh, uh, 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 won't he come and take the position of MD? And immediately in my mind, I assume the MD was MD of the former organization that I, I was working. That same day, I and my wife were going out and here is this person. He was abroad. And when I saw him, I, like people say, I freak out. I mean, I shouted because it was, wow. Over five years we've not seen. Today, I just had a word about this person and here it is. And so we met. And uh, I was just saying, wow, I was just thinking about you today. And uh, it just came to my mind. I couldn't really understand the message. He, then he then told me, he said, oh, I hope you heard I have left our organization. I said, no, I didn't know that in fact, in my mind, I was saying, won't you come and take the place of the MD? That that's the word, that message that came to my mind. He told me, okay, he's uh, looking at something. And then we left. It was after we left, person told me that that person was an, already an MD or was going to take on the role of an MD in another organization. So, but I had restrained the message I got to the former organization. 
Whereas if I had said, Holy Spirit, guide me, I probably would have known and understood more what the message was. Because the message was simple and right. He said, won't you uh, tell him, will he not come and take the place, the MD position? It was, that's how simple it was. Will he not come and take the MD position? He didn't tell former organization. But in my mind, I was just, yet when I met the person, he told me, do you know I have left our organization, our former organization? So what am I saying? The Holy Spirit is simple. He's speaking. He is there. So this is how we will grow as we learn the principles, the keys of the kingdom to, the, uh, to, 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 to access the true riches that God has given to us. God bless you, brothers and sisters. If there is no other question or clarification or addition, we, will, we want to pray here. Let us pray. Let us thank God for his Holy Spirit, our teacher, our counselor, the one who gives us understanding of the keys of the kingdom of heaven the seal of God upon our lives. Oh, let's just give God praise, give him thanks. And now pray and say, Father God, the true riches you have kept for me in this life, let me have it and enjoy it in the name of Jesus. Let me have it and enjoy it. Father, the true riches that you have given to me in this life, oh God, let me have it and enjoy it. Say, Spirit of God, lead me. Give me, teach me the keys, the keys of the kingdom that I need to apply to enjoy the true riches that you have given to me. Thank you, Almighty God. In Jesus' mighty name. I want us to join our voices together to pray. Is there anyone connected here and you haven't surrendered your life fully to Jesus Christ? and thereby experience the transforming power of God by his Holy Spirit that saves, delivers, heals. We want to pray with, for you now. And so pray along with us and say, Father God, I surrender my life to you. I repent of my sin, and I ask, Lord, please forgive me my sins. Lord Jesus, Cleanse me with your precious blood. And I acknowledge you are my Lord. You died for my sins. And from today, I repent of my sins. And I pray, Lord, give me your Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit of God, fill me now and manifest the life of God in me. That eternal life that I may lead and fulfill all of God's will and purpose for my life. In Jesus' name. Finally, let us pray for one another. Join your voices with me and agree. When I pray, you say amen. That's our agreement. The Bible says, if two of you shall agree concerning anything that you ask, it shall be done for you. By my Father who is in heaven. Jesus was the one who promised us that, and Jesus is faithful. Heavenly Father, we agree together as your church as members of the body of Christ, your children, that Father God, you will cover every one of us from all evil in this year, 2021. We pray again and agree, Lord, that every oppression that affects us in any way, in our own individual lives, in our families, in our nations, Every form of oppression will come to an end. In this year, 2021, Lord, you will demonstrate to all humankind that you are God and you are in charge. Heavenly Father, we pray that all your will, all your plan and your purpose for our lives will be fulfilled. Thank you, Almighty God. And Lord God Almighty, we agree that whatever any one of us here has desired to achieve this year, 2021. We ask for the grace, the wisdom, the keys of the kingdom to achieve that 
desire be given to him, be given to her, be given to them. Let your true prosperity be our portion. Thank you, our Lord and our God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And let the church of Jesus Christ say, Bigger, Amen. God bless you and bye bye.